our Sunday School lesson for this week, it culminates all of the works that we have seen Jesus doing over the past few weeks of our Sunday School lessons. In recent weeks, we have seen where Jesus was baptized. We saw where Jesus went out into the wilderness and where he fasted for 40 days and for 40 nights. And then after fasting, he was tempted by Satan in the wilderness of Judea. After all of that, we saw where Jesus, he went about doing his work. He went about teaching. He went about preaching. He went about performing miracles. And all of this in doing the good works of the Lord, it raised the ire of the religious leaders of the Jews, who we have seen stand in opposition against Jesus, questioning him, challenging his authority, asking him, who has given you the authority to do all of the things that you are doing? Their hatred for Jesus, their desire to kill Jesus, it culminates with our Sunday School lesson for this week. We'll see here in our lesson today where Jesus is hanging on the cross. The King of Kings, our Savior. He's hanging there on the cross and our lesson tells us that Jesus was hanging between two thieves. This is again, shows how little the religious leaders, how little they thought of Jesus. For Jesus to be hanging between two common criminals, two thieves. Two thieves who, by the way, one of them said they deserved to be hanging where they were. Jesus, on the other hand, we know that he was innocent. We know that Jesus had done no wrong, but in the Jews' eyes, in the religious leaders' eyes, as we saw in our recent Sunday School lessons, they saw Jesus as a blasphemer. He ran around saying that he was the son of the Father who they perceived was God, but they did not understand the Godhead. The Godhead being the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They didn't like that. And so they raised it up to Pontius Pilate, who saw no wrong in Jesus. Jesus, he, according to Pilate, he didn't challenge the emperor. He didn't challenge the Romans. And so Pilate would have let Jesus go. But the religious leaders, they desired to see Jesus killed because back in the day, blasphemers they were stoned they were put to death but the religious leaders because it was passover they didn't want to get their hands dirty so they decided that the romans would do it on their behalf so as we see jesus hanging there on the cross we see where the people some of the people who were celebrating and applauding jesus's arrival to jerusalem they were now there at the cross and scripture tells us that they scoffed and that they mocked him essentially saying to jesus hey if you are who you said you are, why don't you come down off of the cross? Not only were the people there, but guess who else is there? Scripture tells us that the religious leaders, they were there. And guess what the religious leaders are doing? They were doing the same thing that the people were doing. You see, the religious leaders, they had stirred the people up, turning them against Jesus. When Pontius Pilate had brought Jesus out and said, hey, who would you rather be set free, Barabbas or this man, who is no challenge to, to me or to the emperor, but Barabbas, this man, he, he rebelled against us. Who would you rather be set free? Well, the, the people, the Jews, they much rather Barabbas been set free. And Jesus, the innocent man, they wanted him to die. And there he was, hanging on the cross again between two thieves. And the people, they are mocking, they are ridiculing, they are scoffing at Jesus. And there the religious leaders are doing the same exact thing, scoffing and mocking Jesus, saying to Jesus, hey, he said that he could save others and he did. He went about trying to help others, but look, he can't even help himself. He can't even come down off of the cross. Thankfully, our savior did not come down off of that cross because Jesus was hanging on the cross for us. He was hanging on the cross for all of those who were scoffing, all of those who were mocking him. Jesus was sent to the world to die for all of our sins, giving us all the opportunity at the Lord's forgiveness, his mercy, and an opportunity at salvation to where we can all dwell in the Lord's heavenly kingdom, not for a little bit of time, but for all of eternity. The sun, it was shining bright that day. For the first three hours that Jesus hung on the cross, the sun, it was shining bright as the people stood there mocking and scoffing Jesus for what it was that he was actually doing on the cross. Scripture tells us in the final three hours, from the sixth to the ninth hour, so from about noon to 3 p.m., that darkness fell over the land. And as darkness was falling over the land, 
we find that the brightest moment for mankind was happening right there on the cross. As Jesus hung there on the cross, he was becoming sin. He was taking on all of our sins. And if you remember anything about the Day of Atonement Sunday School lesson that I have shared with you before, Jesus, he was becoming our scapegoat. He was taking on all of our sins, the sins that we committed yesterday, the sins that we commit today, the sins that we will commit tomorrow. He was taking it all on for us. So while Jesus was hanging on the cross, he was being humiliated, which the Romans certainly desired for anyone who was being crucified, but he was also suffering. And I want you to understand this. Jesus, he wasn't just suffering physically as we would think. He was suffering physically, mentally, emotionally, and he was also, most importantly, suffering spiritually by taking on all of our sins. The suffering was so great that we see Jesus on the cross begin to cry out for the Father, saying, Father, why have you forsaken me? Why would Jesus think that way? Why would Jesus think that the Father was forsaking him? Well, as he was becoming sin on the cross, Jesus was becoming the thing that the Lord does not love. He was becoming the thing that God does not put up with. You see, the Lord, he raised a barrier between mankind and himself when Adam and Eve fell in the garden, when sin entered into man, when we were no longer that glorified creation that God had made and we became sin, the barrier was raised. It separated man from the Lord. And that's what was happening to Jesus. He enjoyed the fellowship that he had with the Father, but sin was breaking apart. It was separating. It was creating a gap between the Father and the Son. And the Son could, could sense that. He could feel that. And so he cried out, Why have you forsaken me? Say, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I want you to understand today that the Lord was still there. It was just that wall of separation, that barrier that was separating him from his Son. The barrier again being sin. And Jesus was sent to tear down that barrier. Because Jesus died on the cross, he broke down that barrier. That's why you and I can enjoy our fellowship with the Lord today. That's why we can go to him in prayer today. That's why, again, we have been forgiven. That's why God has shown mercy upon us. That's why all of us who have believed in the only begotten Son now have become heirs to the kingdom of heaven all because Jesus gave himself for us, all because he did not come down off that cross. And if you remember our Sunday school lesson last week, he drank from that bitter cup. And again, we should be grateful. We should be thankful that Christ did this for us, even while the people sat there scoffing and mocking him. It was after he died on the cross where so many strange things began to happen. The veil of the temple that we're told that it tore in two. And there were earthquakes as well. And while the religious leaders and while some of the Jews didn't realize who it was that they had just killed, there was one that was there that scripture records, a centurion, who says that, hey, this man must have been the son of God. If he could realize it, we should realize it today. We should appreciate, again, all that the Lord has done for us by giving us his only begotten son. So what did we learn today? Well, we learned today that Jesus, he died on the cross, right? Not only did he die on the cross, he died on the cross for all of us. He became our propitiation. He became our atonement offering is all that we learned here today. And again, because Jesus gave his life for us, we learned today that we have a premise of everlasting life if we believe in him. All right. So that is our lesson for today. I hope that all of you have a wonderful Palm Sunday, my favorite Sunday of the year. And I hope that all of you will come back for our Easter Sunday school lesson next week as well. Until that time again, I continue to ask all of you continue to keep each other lifted up in prayer. Pray for all of those that are around you. You never know what anybody is going through. And again, let us continue about in grace and in love. That is our calling as a child of God to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Until next time, I'll be doing the same. I'll continue to keep all of you lifted up in my prayers. And I'll pray that the Lord continues to keep and to bless all of you.